Shall we begin? Welcome back. Today we're looking at the AT689, a 65 watt soldering station with digital temperature control. Oh, I love soldering stations almost as much as I love multimeters. Well, not quite. Now this also ships as a DCS AT689 65 watt soldering station, as well as the E-Tool version we're looking at today. Either way, it's the same thing. It's a digital temperature controlled soldering station. It does come in kit form as well, where you get a few extra accessories. Today's version, we're looking at just a straight station with, of course, a gazillion tips. Wow, look at that. That is a ton of tips, and that's a really good thing. So uh, kudos to E-Tool for a big fan of the sponges that. per se. Um, more often than not, though, that's what you get. And once again, that's what you get. A standard sponge, you can lightly douse it in water if you want to clean your tip as you solder. Um, pretty decent build quality here as well. Um, nice and all uh, metal. We have a, do have a plastic roller on top, but uh, the base here is all metal. Definitely a bonus when we're dealing with high temperatures. And the actual soldering iron, again, this is plastic. This is plastic. Um, pretty light as well. In fact, the, the weight of the AC cord and the soldering iron cord almost makes this, you know, a bit of a balancing act at times because it does get moved uh, depending on the weight of the cord pulling. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's neither here nor there. Um, we're talking about 85 to to $100 for this as well. So probably would have been nice to see something um, better than just plastic. Um, we have four rubber feet on the base as well. And we do have these five slots at top to hold some extra tips. Um, but, uh, you know, fit and finish, it's okay, but yeah, definitely something more solid would have been an improvement. That AC power cord, once again, it is also fixed into the unit. Can't remove it, so you're always going to have that tagging along. We have the one on-off rocker switch in the back, and that's about it. We do have a little sticker here, funny enough, um, E-Tool, but I mean, it seems like an afterthought, really. Uh, serial number, and they're telling us we have a two amp fuse but uh, for the love of god i looked high and low and if we do have a fuse in here i don't see it um and to change it would probably be somewhat of a nightmare that's too bad one of the really nice things about this unit is the fact you have both your celsius and fahrenheit so uh hey you know what depends what you like right but um, you have the option to switch from Celsius to Fahrenheit with this unit simply by pressing and holding that green button. It's an analog style uh, temperature control, not necessarily a bad thing, but one of the funny things, and this kind of ticked me off so in a way. looking at the specification sheet here, 120 volts, uh, two to 230 volts AC, 68 watts of power, temperature range from 80 degrees Celsius to 480 degrees Celsius. So pretty good uh, variance there. Stability wise, is plus or minus two degrees celsius which is good if that's really the case um but look at that do you see do you see what i see nixie tube what the hell is this nixie tube they're calling this a nixie tube based unit are you kidding me and it's not just there it's not just there and once again under the appearance and control panel look at that they're calling it a nixie tube display what the Oh my God, that's just And nuts. even with the operational part of the guide, power button, turn off this device. Uh, sorry, turn on after this device given by power. Okay, we'll forget about that English. Set the temperature you want will be shown on the Nixie tube display. <sighs> it ain't a Nixie tube, folks. Sorry, it ain't a Nixie tube. It's just an LED display. And just turning the unit on right now. And there you are, just our standard light emitting diode display. No Nixie tubes. Ugh. For the review, I'm just gonna use the standard conical style tip that it shipped with. Um, once again, the soldering handle itself, eh, you know, they're all the same, right? And we do have some nice strain relief here, uh, which I like as well as on the unit itself. But remember, these are all permanently attached, so uh, it should have some good strain relief. But it's your standard soldering tip holder um, to open it, 
take remove the tip you just unscrew put the other tip back on screw it back and away you go um yeah now if you are a soldering slut i don't know that's a bad word but you know what i'm trying to say i mean if you really like your solder like i do and i really like my stanol um i get it by the kilo and it just it, you know that's this, it's not gonna fit it's just not big enough to take a roll this size so yeah okay i downgraded my soldering roll uh you can see how it fits okay fine let's do a little bit of soldering here and see how good it is now unfortunately with the 689a there is no calibration so i can't go ahead and actually self calibrate this unit it's calibrated at the factory that's it that's all um no user calibration afterwards okay we're going to see how good this is in terms of temperature control uh sitting at 782 degrees fahrenheit let's put it on the heiko and see how close we are Taking a while, 740, still climbing, still getting there. So, hmm, yeah, we are definitely off by around 40 degrees or so. Let's just see if we can do any better here. Yeah, so that kind of sucks, you know? We're, we're not really where we should be. We should be a little bit closer than that. Um, I was hoping to see at least around 760 degrees, but it uh, doesn't look like we're gonna get there. To change the temperature, you just hit that lock button. And there, boom, we are now in Celsius mode. Hit it again, let go, and brings us to Fahrenheit. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a pretty easy, breezy way to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And it has a lock as well. So if you want to lock your temperature, have a set temperature, which doesn't vary even if you're touching that temperature knob, this is what you do. Okay, so right now it's sitting at around 502 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to lock that in. I'm supposed to hold down for three seconds. Eins, zwei, drei, and we are in lock mode lock mode so even if i switch that uh, temperature control real stat bada boom bada bing we are still in loc lock mode cool get out of lock mode of course just hold it again for three seconds bada boom bada bing bada bang and we are no longer in lock mode and we can go ahead and start playing with that temperature like the naughty people we are 689a also features a auto standby function basically when you put that soldering iron back in the holder uh, it'll auto standby after 10 minutes 10 minutes so and once again this is not a user um uh, adjustable time so if you prefer to have it in standby after maybe 60 seconds like i would uh there's nothing you can do 10 minutes that's it that's all there you go also has an auto sleep function um, which will go into effect after 20 minutes so after 20 minutes <laughs> they call it the nixie tube display again but uh they basically the heating core uh doesn't get heated any longer so it's in sleep mode and you will see slp coming up on the display but once again we have no um user functionality uh, adjustment at all it is pure factory defaults that's what you get I'll try a little bit of desoldering right now. Uh, let's check out this diode here. Temperature is pretty high, just over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that going to be enough to take off this? I might have to increase the heat a bit, which I'm going to. Let's just bring it up. All right. So I'm up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay, there we are, coming off. And let's try the other side here. By the way, this is an old multimeter that was uh, destroyed in shipping. 
Um, so not an old multimeter, a new multimeter that got destroyed in shipping. So I am cannibalizing it for parts. Don't throw away those old multimeters that get destroyed in shipping. They are a great source of parts because I'm telling you, you start to buy parts, uh, you know, de facto one at a time. Whoa, these things add up. So there you go. That was not bad. Not bad at all. Handle has a really nice uh, silicone tip here, so you're not going to get burnt or scolded at all with that heat coming from the iron. Let's see if we can remove that NCV filament here from this multimeter. Now, this is ideally not the greatest. Oh, yeah. No, no worries here. That was easy. Try the other side. Ideally, you want a, a flatter tip, a flatter head than this, but... Uh, and yeah, it just comes out like butter. So definitely has a good heat distribution right on that uh, component. Yeah, not bad. Now let's just solder that NCV back on. Yeah, no worries there. In like butter, in like butter. On the opposite side. Yeah, looking good. So good heat distribution on the tip. Um, very comfortable in the hand. Once again, that silicon protection barrier here really does help. And uh, yeah, for general soldering, it should be fine. Um, weird but simple uh, to get the access to internals. Simply pull the front of the housing. Just give it a little push and yeah it just comes off like that no screws no nothing weird but it works all right let's have a look at those internals now first off i gotta point out here they're saying we have a two amp fuse but for the love of god i've looked high and low and i don't see it i don't see it um you know without destroying the assembly entirely uh, is it down there? I put a flashlight. I'm not seeing the fuse. I'm not seeing it hidden. I thought perhaps it might have been hidden or recessed somewhere in the cord itself. Uh, no, it isn't. So where the hell it is, I don't know. Now, construction-wise, it's not that bad, actually. We have some really nice tie-offs here. A lot of shrink, yeah, heat shrink, um, acrylic tubing, everything to keep it in place and secure even that ac cord at the bottom as you can see is tied down nicely with a couple of phillips screws so uh, attention to detail for the small things at least seems to be pretty good hey what don't you see nixie tubes that's right yeah no nixie tubes in this soldering station despite the fact that they're saying the nixies are everywhere well they're not in fact uh, this little doohickey right here that is our led controller not a nixie tube no it's the aip 650 the uh, led display driver right there here we have a 20 ohm high powered resistor and over here is our temperature controller uh ktlp 161j you see these controllers not just in soldering stations but uh, lighting controls uh, ac motor drives uh, solid state solid state relays what have you uh everywhere as you can see tension to detail is pretty nice it's pretty pretty well um i'd say up to snuff in terms of quality uh nice tie backs there's the main real stack controller over here so really not much to this soldering station at all is there uh yeah okay gonna put it back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts on the 65 watt at689 pass this one by that's right you can be shy let this one pass on by bang for buck there's just not enough bang Hey, let's face it, that is a crowded market out there in soldering station land, and this one just does not have enough bells and whistles to compete. Not even close. Granted, it's a nice looking station, has a small footprint, and it seems to solder and desolder just fine. But really, no user calibration, no user uh, intervention at all. You're kind of left to your own devices. To say the controls are simple, and yeah, they are. Having that dual Celsius slash Fahrenheit adjustable control is really nice, but that's where the niceness stops at the end of the day it just doesn't do enough hey no nixie tubes on this one just a standard led display and that's okay but for the love of god lose the nixie nine a soldering station gets a rather dismal two out of five stars hey pass this one by way too much money for way too little thanks for watching this review everybody to the next one keep on testing